Right, so hey everyone and welcome back to another budget photography video. So, in 2021, with, um, with phone cameras getting really, really good, the question kind of has to be asked, iPhone or 10-year-old professional camera? Why don't we find out which one is better? And I'm going to do this a little bit differently because I'm going to present all of the images and all the specifications to you guys so you guys can make up your decision rather than me being like no the the canon is better or or the iphone is better than the canon because there are two different you know what these ducks have been going at it all morning and they're really starting to annoy me now but that's what you get for when you film out here anyway i've completely lost where i was so why don't we go over some of the specifications So why don't we start with the iPhone? Now this iPhone in particular is the iPhone 12 Pro Max and it's a really good phone. It's my personal phone actually. And we have three cameras. Well, as Apple says, we have three lenses, but we don't really, we have three different cameras and they are all 12 megapixels. So we have a nice consistent image, which is really nice. We have a wide, an ultra wide, and a two and a half times telephoto, which is really, really nice. Although I have since recently got rid of my, um, my Note 20 Ultra. And I must say, I do actually miss the zoom, which I didn't really think I would miss, but I do. Two and a half times isn't really a lot. It kind of does the job, but it is nice to have that little bit more reach. And helping us out with focusing is a LiDAR scanner just there, which is pretty damn good. It's not the best, but it does a really good job. We also have a burst rate of 10 FPS and sensors made by Sony. And at the moment, in the camera business, Sony is doing really, really well. So, what about ah, the 10-year-old Canon 1D Mark IV? Now, I do want to just say that I have actually done a review on this. I do really like this camera. So I could be considered a little bit biased here, bearing in mind that I'm just presenting stuff to you guys. Although both of these cameras are my favorite cameras. Anyway, right here, I have a professional camera. Well, about 10 years ago, this was about four and a half grand, maybe more. And even today, it produces really nice images. And well, its defining feature is really good that is 10 fps now you are limited to about 25 shots in a burst whereas on the iphone you can keep going up to about 100. now that could be because of the shutter you know wear and stuff like that but then you could also say well why can you shoot up to well i think it's basically unlimited when shot in jpegs I'm not kidding, this thing will just keep shooting until you stop. Now, inside here we have dual digit four processors and a APS-H, yes, an APS-H Canon CMOS sensor, which as you probably can guess is not full frame. It is only just smaller than full frame, giving you that little bit of crop, which is especially nice when you're out kind of kind of out here really to be fair and you're shooting some wildlife which a minute ago i just was so what works in the canon's favor well first of all there is interchangeable lenses and then well the ef mount on its own really to be brutally honest the ef mount is a really common mount at this point and there are so many lenses available and you obviously don't get that on, on an iPhone, you're stuck with, you're stuck with three, three lenses, really. Um, 
yeah. So you can change the lenses. I've got a 50 mil in there and a 50 mil on this looks actually really nice. But on the downside, because this is made of magnesium alloy and is weather sealed. So that is a good thing. It is really heavy. And then there's the battery. At 2,450 milliamps, it's smaller than the iPhone's battery, but somehow manages to be physically bigger. But that's fine because unlike the iPhone, this lasts all day of continuous shooting, whereas the iPhone kind of, kind of doesn't really. And then there is the viewfinder. It is a really nice, crisp, clear viewfinder because, well, it's an optical viewfinder. So you're seeing directly through the lens using mirrors and optics and probably some sort of magic, I don't know. Then there is the grip. It feels nice in the hand. Canon have obviously spent a fair while designing this grip. It feels nice both in landscape and portrait mode. Shooting portraits with this camera is really nice to do. And shooting generic landscape. Now, one of the things really helping the Canon along is its autofocus. With it being a Canon, it has Canon's really snappy, good autofocus. It locks focus and you just fire away. It's smooth, it's nice, it's kind of typical Canon. Now, we do have an ISO range of 100 to 128,000. We also can expand that to H3, which I really wouldn't expect you to do unless you just want to go all the way down to 50 to shoot something like a long exposure. So now we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So what goes in this thing's favour? Well first of all it's, it's a hell of a lot lighter. A hell of a lot lighter. It's considerably lighter. It's incredibly light. It's about the same weight as the battery really. It's I don't really want to throw it around because it's all glass and stainless steel. And as a matter of fact, I do have my case um, pretty battered now, but I'm going to keep this in my case because this is my personal phone. So you're just going to have to deal with this ugly ass case. I don't really want my phone getting scratched. So please understand that. So what are the conveniences of having the iPhone over the Canon? Well, there are a number of them. And one of them is the fact that it is basic. There is no manual settings. You can't change your shutter speed, you can't change your aperture, your ISO, or really anything like that. It's just point and shoot. Although you do get a consistent image, everything looks exactly the same. No matter which lens you decide to use, whether that be the telephoto, the wide, or the ultra wide, all skin colors and kind of natural colors around the, around the picture look exactly the same. So the iPhone does have a bigger battery, but it's not just a camera. This is a smartphone. You're not just powering a small low powered LCD, a sensor and a shutter. You're powering a high end OLED panel, a camera, a system and yeah, there is a lot more to power. So you're not going to get as much shooting time as you would on the Canon. Now, don't get me wrong, the user interface of the iPhone is perfectly fine. It's pretty basic, as you kind of would expect, really, from anything Apple. Why don't we get down to it, and why don't I show you some pictures from these cameras? Now, I am going to show you a screen recording of the iPhone to show you what it's like, but unfortunately, I do not have the tools and abilities to be able to show you what I see on the Canon. So I'm going to show you the iPhone first and then you're going to watch from this camera what I see, well what I'm shooting sorry, from the Canon. So here we are in the iPhone user interface, pretty basic, pretty standard iPhone really and if you notice just off to your left, just there, you'll notice it says raw and it's crossed out. So to give the iPhone its best opportunity to kind of produce as nice images as possible, we will enable that. Now, I will say this isn't real RAW. This is DNG, which is a what I call a baby RAW. So why don't we snap some pics and see what we can get. Let's get some nice birdie pics because that's what I'm really here for today as well. Here for some nice bird pics. So 
Mm, you can really see that kind of, you know, you shouldn't really go past that kind of, you know, two and a half times zoom because they do look. Let's use the, that's the video. <laughs> Didn't want video. That was me mucking up. I thought that was the burst. I forgot Apple decided to change it to um, the volume rocker now. So, ah, here we go. Let's have a nice little burst on that. There we go. And then, here we go, another one. I can't really feel the limitations of this phone, even just doing this. I feel like as if, I'm kind of, I don't know. I know I said I wasn't gonna say what I feel and what I think, but I, I kind of feel as if I have to, because I mean, I feel very limited by this camera. I mean, yeah, okay, it's, 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 it's a phone. You know, you kind of expect it. It's more of just kind of, let's take a picture, kind of like that. Actually, you know what I want to do? I'm going to put live view on, and then I'm going to go down, and then take a nice dramatic picture, just like that. And we'll go into there. And then I'm going to make it a long exposure. Although I should have probably um, made sure that it was actually straight before I, yeah. Does that look better? I can't really tell here. No, it doesn't, does it? Oh, I'll sort that out in editing. Anyway, let's go to the Canon there, shall we? See what the Canon can do in comparison. So with this being a professional camera, albeit about 10 years ago, this has obviously professional features. So we have a really nice shutter button. It performs really well. The images are going to look really nice. And I know that because even if I wasn't shooting this video and I was just given this camera, I kind of trust that this Canon will shoot exactly what I want it to and exactly how I need it to. Because, well, let's be fair, it's a Canon and you know what you're going to get. You know you're going to get this, you know, this, this user interface when you, you know, when you need it. You know where everything is going to be. You know the layout of everything. It's familiar, especially to someone like me. Now, don't get me wrong. This is no everyday camera like the iPhone is. This is designed to be a sports camera. And I would probably expect maybe maybe it was even used at the London 2012 Olympics all them years ago. Not really sure what one was out then. I must say. Oh, that sun has just come out and it's really bright. And I didn't bring an ND filter. Well, not for this lens anyway. So um, I think we will... Oh. How's that? Does that look better now? Do I still look as sexy? Now, taking this thing out of burst mode and putting it into one shot mode is still really nice. It's still kind of what you would expect from a Canon. And if you've got quick fingers, then you can get a decent-ish burst rate, but you're not really going to be kind of happy, snappy kind of shooting with this thing. You know, you have that burst rate of 10 FPS, and 
you feel kind of obligated to kind of use it, to be brutally honest. Well, at least I do anyway. I feel like if, since you've got that birth rate, you should use it. Even when you're shooting something not that interesting, like my camera. So, now that we've taken the pictures from both the cameras, why don't we go back to editing and see what they look like to see if this is bad or if this is good. Or maybe the iPhone wins. We'll let you decide. So, before we go and edit the pictures, we need to test one more thing that I nearly forgot about. Video mode. Both of these cameras shoot some kind of video, whether that be 1080p, 4K, or, well, that's it actually, 1080p and 4K. This is the iPhone's front-facing camera on a gimbal. It's easier to hold on a gimbal. Why don't we switch around and you can have a look at the other ones. So, this is the ultra wide. Looks pretty damn good if you ask me. It looks very, very iPhone-y really, to be brutally honest. Let's have a look at the normal wide. Again, pretty good. It's okay. At 4K, looks nice. Nice smooth shots, especially from this gimbal. And then let's have a look at the telephoto. So we'll zoom in to, oh, okay. We are not allowed to zoom in past this on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We can only go up to one and a half times, apparently. Or can I magically, nope. Nope, that's, that's, that's it, unfortunately. We can't do the um, two and a half times zoom. We're stuck at one and a half, which is okay. Although this is very digital. This isn't using the telephoto lens. Even I can tell that. So I think what we'll do is we'll change the lens. So this is now the two and a half times. And it looks, yeah. Let's uh, move around. It looks kind of okay. It looks like every other lens on here. Very consistent, very nice. Colors are fairly accurate. Handling the highlights, let's really push this. The sun's there, whoops. And yeah, that's handling it better than even my eyes can handle that apparently, because I can't see all of that. <laughs> so let's have a look at one, no, I can't. You can't change the lenses. I have to stop recording to be able to change my lenses. Um, that's a bit of a pain. I don't like that. So why don't we um, go and see how the 1D video does and see if that's any, any good or if it's bad. So when I recorded most of this video, I actually recorded a piece for, well, the video for the 1D Mark IV but somehow I managed to delete it and I've lost the file. So this is that replacement file. I'm now vlogging in a way on the 1D Mark IV. It's incredibly heavy to do this one-handed. Like ridiculously heavy to do this one-handed. But uh, all in a day's work really. So let's zoom in. How's the focus? That's not focusing. This is meant to have autofocus. On here, how's it handling the, the highlights? I've got it at the right settings. Have some stabilization. So this doesn't have in-body stabilization. This has lens stabilization. So the actual lens itself is stabilized rather than the body. Although I do need to move where my mic is, so I'm holding it. Hang on. So 
See, I'm holding, I'm holding my microphone. I, I, I can't find a good place for it because I put it there. It's pointing away from me. But this bit, or it's pointing to me. It's. I don't. Is, is that better? My AirPods are in as well, so I can't really hear properly. Um, I don't know. This is crooked as well. This tripod. And that should. Is that straight? No, that's not. I'm using the 24 to 105. It's quite a tight lens, really. Whew. Yeah. How's the how's the um, autofocus and stuff like that? Does it look good? Does it look bad? It's a really big camera in comparison to um, something as small as the iPhone 12. You know, I don't think I have this on the right focus motor because it's not focusing on anything at all. And the thing is, I don't have a flip LCD screen, so I can't actually see if any of this is in focus. So I won't see if any of this is in focus until I look back at the footage in about five to 10 minutes. And this grass is completely wet. So I'm gonna walk back that way and away from the grass because it's all wet. And my feet are already wet. So, now that we've seen both what, no. So, we've now seen what both of them can do. I will admit, I have some thoughts on the video of the 1D. It was good, typical Canon colors. It was just nice footage to work with. But the autofocus in video mode was absolute rubbish. Um, whereas the iPhone has obviously better focusing. So I've got something in my eye. This wasn't planned. There we go. Um, I also noticed that you can't change how sensitive you want the microphone. So right now I have the camera here set up as really, really sensitive, well, not really sensitive. And then this as sensitive, um, this one here so that it, it sounds better anyway. Um, so you couldn't really change the sound settings, the input settings. So that's a bit of a bummer. But what you need to remember is the 1D isn't really designed for video. It is designed for photo work. But because they can both do video, I felt that I needed to include the both videos there. Um, so what do you think? Do you think the iPhone was better? Do you think the Canon was better? Which one was better for you? Anyway. Thanks for joining me in this really, really long video. I'm really sorry. Um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.